Since women stopped being able to have babies, what's left to hope for? I picked Children of Men uh, for another Future Tense showing uh, for a couple of reasons. So first of all, uh, it opens with this apocalyptic scene of Britain that has decided to deport all of the illegal aliens and essentially turn the island into a huge concentration camp. Uh, that's obviously something that should be on people's minds after Brexit and after the rise of Donald Trump and a lot of anti-immigrant sentiment. Uh, that was one issue, but beyond that, I think the movie, um, well, I, I love post-apocalyptic movies about how the human race ends, and this one poses a very interesting question about how much of our uh, thinking about our current lives is dependent on having a future. Uh, the premise of the movie is that the last child was born in something like 1996. Uh, all women have become infertile. They can't have any more children, so the current generation that's alive is the last human generation. As far as I'm concerned, it's hugely important because I've been involved in public policy issues uh, most of my life, and there's a lot of them like, you know, what's the future of Social Security or what are we going to do about global warming that become completely um, irrelevant if this is the last generation on Earth. Why do you think we can't make babies anymore? It doesn't matter. It's all over in 50 years. It's too late. Move along! There are a lot of issues like, what kind of risks am I going to take? Uh, you know, will I join a revolutionary movement to restore justice to the world and risk my life if I know that there's no lives coming after me? Or if I fall in love with someone, does it matter that, you know, this is going to be the end and there will be no possibility of future generations and uh, future children. So I think all of those were part of the reasons I really like this movie. It, it's different from the scenario where there's an asteroid hurtling towards Earth or there's been a recent nuclear war and the fallout cloud is about to hit and kill everybody within two weeks. And so in that genre uh, of apocalypse, basically, everybody goes crazy. You know, you take drugs and you have sex and, you know, participate in, you know, criminalizing stores and stuff, all the stuff you've wanted to do your whole life but felt constrained from doing because you know that there are not going to be any consequences. This is a more, this is a different scenario because you're going to live out your life. You may live another two, three, four decades depending on how old you are. Uh, and this is one of slow decline in which the longer term future is not available to you and it's an interesting question about whether all social order just breaks down as it does in the short-term apocalypse scenario or whether you actually still worry about things uh, you worry about the what's going to happen in five years or ten years and you know try to make uh, plans for those and i actually don't know what the answer to that is This is, in a way, the scenario that is now being played out in Japan and South Korea and Taiwan and a number of really low fertility countries where the population is basically shrinking and aging uh, and actually doing that very rapidly. Not obviously as it happens in Children of Men, but you know, the idea that we are constantly going to grow, you know, that Next year is going to be bigger, there'll be more buildings and more you know, stuff to do and more technologies uh, is actually, you know, in, in certain parts of the world, all of that's going into reverse. And so there aren't, you know, new schools opening and, and, and new stuff happening. And in fact, people are consolidating, they're leaving buildings that they've lived in for generations and, and, and uh, you know, and so that, that the movie really does speak to, uh, you know, a real social situation, I think, that uh, many countries are probably going to face in the future. It's interesting, the novel was written uh, in the early 1990s. 
the illegal immigration theme that's very present in the movie is not there in the novel. And in a sense, the, the rebellion and the uh, repression are both much more strongly featured in, in the movie than they are in the, in the novel. The novel is really like, it's more like Japan today, you know, this just slow fading away of people, of a society gradually getting uh, older. And, you know, the, the movie, I think, for dramatic purposes, emphasizes the violence and, and, and uh, a kind of rapid change. And in that sense, it's not really faithful, I think. And, and it also makes the movie, I think, a little bit more implausible if you think through how people would actually behave uh, in that kind of situation. P.D. James, the author of the novel, says that this is a Christian parable. And that's very evident, I think, in both, uh, in both the novel and especially in the movie. I thought the single most striking scene was the one in which Theo and Key, the pregnant uh, uh, you know, black woman that has a child, the first child in, in 18 years, when they're in this bombed out building, they're trying to get out, they're soldiers trying to shoot their way in, and all of a sudden people hear the cry of the baby and they, all these armed violent men put down their, their weapons and they let them pass through and some of the soldiers bow and cross themselves as they walk out. And there's, a, there's a, a scene in the movie where it is really the holy family. It's Joseph and Mary uh, and, the, and, the, and baby Jesus, you know, uh, going through an exile in Egypt, uh, you know, and fleeing for safety. Uh. I'll call my baby Dylan. It's a girl's name too. The title of the movie actually comes from Psalm 90, uh, in which uh, it's a psalm of Moses, in which Moses, also passing through the desert at that point, uh, says, you know, God was here before man existed. Uh, God will be here after man passes away. He visits uh, violence on men, uh, and man has the opportunity to repent. There's redemption both at that level, but also at the level of Theo, the, the hero of the movie, because at the beginning he's lost a child, he's lost a marriage, he's cynical, he's alcoholic, he really doesn't care very much about anything. And then, as a result of meeting Key in this group, he has a mission in life, which is to save her. Uh, and he takes huge personal risks in order to do that, and in the end he dies in order to deliver her to this boat, the tomorrow, that represents uh, hope. And so it's kind of a story of his personal redemption and, and the finding of meaning, as well as this larger religious imagery in which uh, the movie is, uh, is encased. <laughs> 